So I think I might have broken our tractor. Hey, welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. It is a chilly but sunny day here at the farm. I have a few things I have to take care of today. I'm gonna to reposition our water tote that we brought up the last time we came to the property, and then I need to start clearing out the stumps and the brush for the garden area. We need to get some gear oil for our tiller before we start tilling the garden area. Well, I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'm gonna to get to work. Got some nice looking frost here on the seat. My butt's gonna love that. <laughs> Tractor does not like this cold weather. I got the pallet forks off and the grapple is on. So let's go ahead and take it up to the garden area and get to work. My goal right now is to move these four stumps over to the pile of debris and logs and branches that are on the other side of where I'm at right now. Then I'll try to clear out some of this brush and debris to clean it up a little bit. Let's see how it goes. Picking up these stumps with the grapples is a lot more difficult than I expected it to be. They're not very uniform and they don't easily fit in the grapple, but I finally figured out how to do it. This is my second one, and as soon as I drop this off in a second, I'll just have two to go. This one is a little bit smaller and therefore lighter, and it was easier to grapple and pick up, but it's still pretty heavy. And I think what I've learned most about this whole situation is that I really need to invest in some nice rear ballast because I don't want to tip over. I got all four stumps over here. That last one was the big giant one that took me about two and a half to three hours to get out. If you haven't already seen that video, you should check it out. It was so heavy that it was starting to tip the tractor a little bit. I didn't feel like I was in danger, but I needed to play it safe. So what I did was I actually dropped the grapple into free float mode, ramped up the RPMs and just pushed it over there. That was the safest way to do it and it eliminated the possibility of me tipping the tractor. That wouldn't be fun. My goal right now is to try to clean up as much of this debris as possible. My plan is to use the grapple and push it out of the way just like I did that tree stuff a few minutes ago. Let's see how that goes. I've been using the grapple a little bit to get some of the bigger logs out of the way, but most of this debris I found is a lot easier to actually get with the box blade. This is the box blade. I'm sure you've seen it in some other videos. Basically what it does is they use these scarifiers to dig into the ground and pull stuff up. This box collects the debris as well as a bunch of dirt and pulls it along. If there are any divots or holes in the ground, stuff will fall through and fill in that hole. 
it's really great for grading and maintaining gravel driveways. I'll show you what it's like in action. Every once in a while I have to get off to get these branches unstuck. This is the hole that was left from that massive stump. And these are the two non-existent holes from the tree stumps that I dug out. We went from this to this in about 15 minutes. I'm not completely done with this garden area yet. There's still quite a few roots sticking up out of the ground that I need to dig up. Several more passes of that box blade will definitely take care of it. I need to switch over to the bucket and fill this hole with some dirt, and then I can start grading it as well. This area right here we've measured to be approximately a fifth of an acre, and it will be our first of many gardens on the farm. It was a very productive day here at the farm. I usually only get about three hours at a time to come up to the farm. We're over an hour drive, and we have little ones that need to get to school and get picked up from school, but I take every advantage I can to come up here and be productive. I've used the box blade a little bit before, but I really got to see it in action today and make really good use of it rather than just kind of playing around with it. I was able to get so much of the garden area cleaned up and smoothed a little bit. The ground is a lot softer now than it was before, less compact. We're planning on getting a bunch of soil and compost delivered up here. We'll use the bucket to transport it up to that area and we'll use that tiller to get it into the ground, making it nice and fertile for our garden. Time was one of the main reasons I stopped working on my project. There were two other factors. The first one, I was getting low on fuel. Being low on fuel was actually a good thing because I need to be able to get those plastic pieces out of the fuel tank from that fun little disaster we had a couple weeks ago. The tractor's super hot, so I don't want to be dipping into the fuel tank right now, but I'll go ahead and do that next time I'm out here. Another reason I stopped when I did was because I had a little accident with the tractor. When we first got into the property, I noticed that there were some wires hanging underneath the midsection. It seemed really dangerous because I knew I was going to be going over a bunch of debris and stumps and who knows what else. So I had taken some zip ties and pulled it a little bit tighter. Apparently those zip ties didn't hold very well because I was going over some debris and felt a little bit of a snag. I looked behind me and there were wires dragging behind the tractor. Nothing appeared to be wrong, but there were wires detached. After doing a little more box blade work, I tried to use the grapple to move something. Well, guess what? The third function wasn't working. I wasn't leaking hydraulic fluid, so I knew it had to be electrical. After doing a little investigation, I found where the wires went. I believe these are solenoids. This one was completely intact, so I was able to just plug it back in. This gray piece right here, not that you can see it very well, part of the plug was still attached and the wires had been yanked loose. I was able to get the wires back in there, so now the solenoids worked. But there was still another loose wire. I popped the hood and found some more wire that had been torn. Luckily, I always keep a pair of pliers in the tractor. I was able to use those to strip away some of the insulation and reconnect the wire and put this little protective sleeve back over it. And I turned the tractor on and it worked. Who knows how much it would have cost to take it to the dealership and have them repair it. Right after it happened, I took a picture and I uploaded it to the Kubota Facebook group that I'm a member of. Of course, nobody there was helpful. They were all joking around, they're like, oh, that was to go to the flux capacitor. Hey, I love Back to the Future more than just about anybody, but I wasn't in a laughing mood, and I really wanted my tractor to work, and I didn't want it to cost lots of money. There were about six replies on there, none of them were helpful. I decided, you know what, I'm a smart guy, I can figure it out. And you know what, I did. I did it all on my own, without the help of anybody, and I'm proud of myself because I have very little mechanical experience. I've done a few things to my car, thanks to YouTube, but other than that, I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to stuff like that. I had it working, and then I decided to close the hood. Well, the problem was I did not put the wire that goes to the battery in the correct place, so when I closed the hood, it yanked it out. I really need to get going, so the next time I come up, I'll bring some electrical tape and some better tools so that I can re-splice it and have it working again. I'm so thankful it was a really easy fix and I know what to do. We really appreciate you watching this video to the very end. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. At the time of this recording, we have 202 subscribers, which is about a fifth of the way to our 1,000 subscriber goal. Feel free to share your favorite rig and farm video to your friends. We'd love to be able to share our story with more people. We'll see you next time. Bye.